You talk about buying a new skateboard and you get ads for buying a skateboard? R slash as credit. What do you believe, but cannot prove? Around 1995 I was away in college. Broke up with a girlfriend, and when she left she took the remote for the TV. I just figured I misplaced it. I moved back to my hometown a month later. Soon I bought a new TV, and never thought about it again. About 4 years later we get back in contact we were from the same geographic area. She drops by my new place for a coffee, and after she leaves I can't find the remote for my, now new, TV. I search everywhere, and in a crack under the back cushion on the couch I found the remote for the old TV. Never did find the remote I needed for the new TV. I'm sure she stole both of them, and pulled the switcheroo years later. I sold my Nintendo Wii for a profit as a kid. My parents bought it for 250 I sold it for 400 so I made 400 since it wasn't my money. I showed my uncle the day I got paid. Next thing you know I check my money again that night, because 400 was a lot for me, and now it's only 200 I guess my uncle left me half which was generous. I can't prove this, but he was arrested for breaking into a house and stealing some things, so that leads me to believe that I was right. How old were you? Who the f peep steals from their own nephew Jesus Christ? Drug addicts. Narcissists. Sociopaths. Psychopaths. Degenerates. Last I heard of him, he was high on some type of injectable. That my sister-in-law was f peeping my brother's best friend, while my brother was in the hospital fighting leukemia. My brother died, and the best friend moved into sister-in-law's house six months later. Two pieces of speep deserve each other. Sorry about your bro. I won the lottery in 1999. I went to my local grocery store on the Saturday as I always did in the morning. I bought milk, coffee and tea bags for my boss. I walked to the counter and paid for everything and then handed the teller my ticket to check it in the machine. They beeped the ticket in the reader and literally jumped up and down shouting jackpot jackpot the machine went grrrr grr brett vvr mmm as it printed out a receipt. The teller instantly said ha 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 only joking and threw the slash my ticket in the trash and they laughed the entire time. See, I would always joke with these guys about everyday stuff. I'm light hearted and I try my best to make people's days better. Here's the thing that makes me know I won the jackpot. The machine doesn't make any noise when you beep slash read a loser. It doesn't print a receipt. It doesn't go grrrr grr brett s silent. So I just kinda laughed and said you got me and I didn't think through the process of the receipt printing, the noise or their reaction until I got back to my office. Then after a while I thought, I'll go back and get my ticket out of their trash. I'll make up a reason I need my ticket. I want to play the same numbers next week. So I would like to copy it? Sounds reasonable right? I went back and asked for the ticket. Everyone was flustered. But being me, I just thought I caught them at the wrong time. So I just asked to look at the bin slash garbage and I'll get my ticket. There wasn't a single ticket in that bin, was trash from the same day, but zero lottery tickets. Me, being stupid just went along with it, even though my alarm bells were ringing. The family that owned that grocery store for 20 years were gone within a month, and when I saw the teller a family member. She was dressed in high-end designer clothes six months later she literally ran away from me beat red. I won the lottery. This actually happened in my local area. An elderly woman won the lottery not the jackpot. One of the smaller prizes. Maybe a few hundred pounds. She wasn't aware of it and took the ticket to the news agent slash corner shop for them to check electronically, like she always does. They told her she hadn't won anything and kept the ticket. Later, she realizes somehow she had actually won and found out the news agent cashed the ticket himself. There was absolute uproar here. Boycott of the shop and everything. There are still people who won't shop there years later. If you are enjoying this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button to support this channel. I went to a Guns N' Roses Acura XL Rose concert during the Barrelhead days. Around 2006 I think. 
Anyway I'm about 99% sure that the singer on stage was not really AXL. I was such a huge fan, so I'd seen them on this tour a couple times already. He looked like AXL and sounded like him, but there was something off about it. Can't put my finger on it, but I really think that it was a very good impersonator. I saw Chur in concert when I was a teen. In the middle of one of her songs a Chur impersonator came out to sing with another. The stage was full of Chur impersonators, and I was left wondering whether I ever saw the real Chur. <sighs> Gonna sound crazy F. But, you know targeted ads. You talk about buying a new skateboard and you get ads for buying a skateboard? I swear I'm getting ads for speep I only thought about. <sighs> that some people wait around until they see someone sitting or parked by themselves and then go sit or park close to them. I don't know what their goal is, but it happens so many times there has to be something going on. This happens to me all the time. I purposely park far away from the store, usually within the last few rows. And I usually have plenty of empty spots on both sides of my car. Inevitably when I come back to my car there is someone parked in a spot right next to my car. Even though there are lots of empty spaces in the same row. I absolutely hate this too. The vehicle I drive doesn't have a great turning radius, so it's much easier to get in and out of parking spaces when I have an open space on each side. It's so frustrating purposely leaving space when parking, only to come out and someone parked right next to you when there's tons of other open spaces. <sighs> Childhood friends stole my copy of Super Smash Bros. Malay. Haunts me to this day. Did they do it? I'll never know. That's treason. Root of all my trust issues stemmed from the disappearance of that little disc. Rightfully so. It's one of the best video games ever created. <sighs> there is some culture on earth that has realized that denim is better for drying hands than both tissue paper and air dryers, and so has denim paper instead. Sir, I'd like to talk to you about a business proposition. I remember these cloth roll dispensers being popular in gas station bathrooms in the 90s. Everyone thought they were gross, because we falsely believed it was just 6 feet of cloth being circulated. I think they would be a lot more popular, if the dispenser and receiver were two separate boxes, so you know the part you're wiping is fresh. I'm physically disabled, and as my issues have worsened with time I've gone from directly working with patients to a desk job. Around the time covered started, I finally had to request some gear. To be able to do my job due to my issues. At my employer. This sort of thing comes out of the office budget. Recently I got an interview for another area. And it went really well. A short time after. A cow or vaguely no contacted me. And asked me a lot of questions about my disability and the recent aid I needed to continue doing my job. I didn't think anything of it. As people get curious. And ask me questions every so often. She did ask a lot of oddly in-depth questions about how our employer made changes for my disability. Time passes, and I hear nothing about the position. I contact the hiring manager, and whereas before she was friendly and open, she talks to me now, like she has someone with a gun standing behind her, and she's afraid to say the wrong thing. Eventually she tells me the position was filled, and she doesn't know why I wasn't though she's the one who would do the notification. A few days later it's announced that the woman who was asking me all the questions got the job. I had no idea she was interviewing. And I suspect one of her higher up friends tipped her off I was her competition. From things that have happened since, I suspect she talked about me in the interview. And convinced the hiring manager hiring me would mean expenditures to account for my disability. And that being disabled I wouldn't be able to keep up with my work like non-disabled employees. But I can't prove any of it. This pissed me off. Like I'm in a terrible mood now, and will not come out of it until this is made right somehow. <sighs> my best friend was driven to suicide directly by my ex-girlfriend his then girlfriend as a way to get back at me. It worked. Jesus peep. I'm sorry for your loss. I would be perfectly happy doing absolutely nothing productive for the rest of my life if I didn't have to worry about money. My best friend's husband murdered her and staged it as a suicide. 
To this day I don't believe she took her own life. Intelligent life exists outside of our solar system. I bet the odds that intelligent life exists elsewhere in the universe is near 100% because of how peeping big the universe is. But the odds that we will ever find it is near 0% because of how peeping big the universe is. When my mom died, my dad and I basically lived in a stupor for nearly a full year. But then we both kind of agreed we needed to move on, and we spent all of August and September cleaning and renovating our apartment from top to bottom. Keeping things of hers that were important. And giving away slash donating slash tossing the rest. All of her clothes. Macup. Perfume. We gave away or donated. I steam cleaned the floors and upholstery. Twice. We kills primed the walls and painted in them. Scrubbed and or painted anything that stood still long enough. We even got new curtains and blinds. It looked like a new place. It smelled like a new place. Christmas was big for my mom, and I have strong memories of her staying up all Christmas Eve baking and wrapping last minute gifts. We did not celebrate Christmas the year before. Both of us had barely even noticed it had passed. So the next year I stepped into the idea of taking up the traditions my mom had left behind, including the staying up late and finishing baking and wrapping. It was late, like 2 or 3 a.m., and the whole apartment smelled like peppermint chocolate from the cookies I was making. And I went to get more tape from the desk next to where my mom's recliner used to be. And I got it with the smell of her perfume so strongly. Just how it smelled when it was on her a while. Which was spicier and not as floral as it would be straight from the bottle. I swear I smelled the smoke of the herbal cigarettes she would buy herself a pack of for special occasions. It was so strong and so real. And when I got closer to the spot I swear I could almost feel her there. Like I expected her and her chair to suddenly appear there in that spot. I just stood there for a few seconds and then the smell was gone. I grabbed the tape and went back to wrapping. Telling myself it was some kind of reaction to my first real holiday celebration with my mom. I told myself it was probably trapped in the carpet or in my mind. It's not real. I went and sniffed there multiple times a day for weeks. And finally I went and bought a steam cleaner and went over that spot multiple times, hoping that the steam would make that smell rise from the carpet, and I could call myself a big baby, but it didn't pull up anything but carpet cleaner and some cat hair. But to this peeping day I swear to whatever deity or lack thereof there is, she was there, or some part of her was. I can't prove it, or disprove it, and despite my real want to say it was just some sort of trick my mind played on me. Because it'd be easier for me to accept that. I can't help but believe in it. It never happened again. And after living in it for three more Christmases we left that place four years ago. And as far as I know, no one has reported any smells or anything. So it was probably just my warped mind. But I still believe it was her. In the near future an app or social media site will be created that essentially functions the way labor unions were meant to function. It will cause upheaval. Places like Walmart and manufacturers will suddenly have to deal with flash strikes. These companies will suddenly come up with an app that you have to use to see your schedule that definitely doesn't read info on your phone such as which apps you have installed. My company already does that. They put out their app earlier this year that we use to clock in and out, see our and our coworkers schedules, make vacation requests. Pretty much everything is done through the app. And I never even looked at the permissions requested. Mine too. That's why I keep a $10 burner with the only phone for just work things. Came here to suggest this very thing. High five. Google Maps collects data on speeding slash driving habits and sells them to insurance or another private company, even with location off. There was that one guy who made a traffic jam just by walking with a wagon full of phones. Organize a few people doing this and we can spell out send nudes in red lines 